everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where we teach you all about painting miniatures from start to finish and everything in between, including this week's episode. Welcome to part 135 layering. Today I'm going to go over layering in some good detail. Just a basic example of layering and how it contrasts to glazing from last week in a similar example. So today we're going to be painting this guy with a green cloak, just like we did last week with the same two colors, but obviously a different approach. We're going to go darker and lighter. You can do the opposite if you want and go lighter to darker in this case, but today we're just going to go darker to lighter. So we're going to start with Waflesh, flesh and we're going to apply a nice solid base coat to the miniature. Now the two things, number one, the key is thin paints. As you can see, I'm going to really heavily thin down my paints. It's going to be like about a three to two ratio of Waflesh flesh and, and case striking green as well to uh, Lamia medium. It's going to be nice thin paints and that's what the key is to layering in nice thin paints because they dry quickly and they blend nicely. So we're going to use one thin layer at a time and the key is, we're, of course, we're doing lots of thin layers. And with thin paints, you don't obscure any details, especially on this cloak. You don't want your paint going on nice and, you don't want it to be clumpy, you want it nice and thin. So the first step is a nice solid foundation. And now we're going to take our striking green and we're going to build up layers on the cape. So as you can see now, the key first step is, of course, I'm going to put it on my wet palette. I love wet palettes for layering because they maintain the wet paint for a long period of time. And uh, it's just quite nice in that case versus having to worry about it drying. So wet palette is awesome. Now you can see I'm going to add like three or four drops of Lamian Medium. I already added a lot of Lamian Medium to the, uh, the Wa Flesh. So I'm going to add three or four drops of, uh, of Lamian Medium and make it nice and thin. So now we got our nice thin strap of green and now we're just going to quickly blend it up. Now I'm going to blend it a little bit better, but, but this is basically the approach that I take when blending the paints. I'm just going to go up back and forth between the two paints and build up a gradient of color. As you can see by just constantly adding more of each one and the and with each one it just blends it nicer. So the, the top area will be darker, the light area will be at the bottom. And that's about it. That's how I quickly blend up my colors. I'm going to do a little bit better as, you, as you'll see when I start using the paints. Um, but basically that's what we're doing. We're building up a nice gradient of colors. Now the key is then when you're using the layering approach is start with the one color. In this case it's the darkest because we're going darker to lighter. You can go the opposite as I said. So in this case, we'll start off with the wall flesh, and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slowly work our way down and, and, and load paint onto our brush from each area of that gradient. And so I'm gonna blend it a little bit nicer, you'll see by the end of it. But, um, so we're gonna go work our way down the gradient of color a little bit, just like a line at a time. And we're gonna load that into our brush and then apply it, building um, upwards from the recesses towards the raised areas. Or in this case, well, I'm gonna start with the peaks by defining them and then work my way downwards. And with each following step, I'm going to go less down than I did the previous step. So I'm going to start the peaks each time, work my way downwards, and not go as far down. So you see right now, I'm just built, I'm starting by defining the peaks and then working my way downwards towards the troughs, as I typically do with my cloaks. And you can do the opposite if you wish. You can start with the troughs, work your way upwards. Either way, it'll, it'll be a good gradient of colors. So right now, I'm just building up my layers. And this is the only one I'll be showing in real time. The rest of them I'll be showing up double time because it's just the same approach. But with each step, as I'm going to work my way downwards on my gradient, the key is nice, thin colors. And because they're thinned down, they do tend to dry quite quickly because they have a large uh, surface area to volume ratio. Right, they're thin paints. So as you see now, I'm just working my, I start with the peaks and then uh, work my way downwards towards the troughs and just building up a nice gradient color. Now, the first step is almost indistinguishable from the previous one because, as you can see, I'm at the very top part of that gradient and there's only a little bit of stracken green in this. It'll dry significantly darker. But then with each step, it's gonna get lighter and lighter and lighter. And what professional painters do is they do this in about 15 layers. I'm gonna only do this in about five or six today. But the more layers you do, obviously, the more subtle the effect will be. And you just work your way in a direction, either upwards or downwards, towards the light source, away from the light source, etc. But that's about it in a nutshell. That's layering. The key is nice thin paints. Take your time. And when loading your brush, obviously, do a little bit at, your at a time and work your way towards a consistent, uh, a consistent direction. And you'll build up your gradient. And you can do this on any place. I just like using it on capes because they're really nice and bendy and they show the detail quite nicely. You can do this on faces. You can do this on anything you really want. So now we're going to go down, as you see. I'm going to work my way down slightly to down that gradient. As you can see, it's nice, a little more blended right now. And I grab some more paint and I'm going to continue on the process. But now I'm going to speed it up a little bit because I'm just repeating the steps. Once again, identifying the peaks, working my way downwards towards the troughs, but each step going less and less down as I do. And I'm going to build up a nice green gradient. Um, and by the end, the last color I use will just be Strachan Green. 
So right now it's a common, it's actually a combination um, of Stratton Green and Wall Flesh. But with each increasing step, there'll be more and more Stratton Green to Wall Flesh until the point where it's just Stratton Green. And you can do this an infinite number of times. And with the more steps you use, the better the approach will be, just like glazing. But uh, I don't want to do an infinite number of steps for this example. I just want to show you the basics of layering. And as you can see, it really does contrast to glazing because glazing, we're not combining the paints. We're just using the, the darker color and tinting the lighter color um, a large amount of times to the point where it just approaches the darker color. But we're doing this in the gradient form. And now we're just gonna go with the lighter color, repeat this process again, start with peaks and the areas that you wanna build up towards and work your way towards the darker areas. As you can see, the um, each color appears brighter and brighter, but it does dry significantly darker than what you're, you're going with because it, they are thin, so they'll dry, you know, a bit darker and dark, um, a bit more blended in. And as you can see, with each increasing layer, the gradient gets a little stronger on the model and a little stronger on the model. The key is with is patience when you're uh, when you're like to paint by layering. The key is patience because you got to do you know a bunch of coats. So you do a coat one at a time, let it completely dry, and then proceed to the next one. You never want to start the next layer when the one the previous one is, is drying because then you'll end up cracking it and showing brush strokes. And that's what one of the benefits of nice thin paint is that it just doesn't show any brush strokes in your good shape. So you see, we're just going to keep building up this, this gradient of colors and each one is getting slightly stronger, slightly stronger, slightly brighter, closer to striking green. So this is this point we're about, you know, this is about two thirds or three quarters Strack and Green, one, just the remainder, uh, Wa Flesh. But it's, it's very bright, vibrant green at this point. And you can build it as, as subtle or as deep or as strong as you want. As you can see in this one, where it's probably the piece of getting a little stronger, but there's a bit of a gradient down the, uh, down the cape, and that's what I'm trying to go for. And just building up which areas I really want to really pop when the eyes, you know, hit the model. And then finally, this is just this is the last step I'm going to do. This is just pure strack and green. But as you can see by this point, there's a barely a difference between the pure strack and green and the, the previous step that we did. And that's a key for some nice blending. Is that the final step? You don't want it to be too strong of contrast um, between the final step and then the previous mix step. Uh, you just want it to blend in and just be one continuum of, of colors. In this case, greens on the area. As you see, it will dry a little bit darker, as I mentioned. And that's it. So now, you guys can see here, there's a nice gradient of greens flowing, in, especially when you turn it sideways, you can see all the layers of colors and how they just build up to the brighter green and the green really makes it pop at the end. But as I said, you can do an infinite number of layers if you want. This is just a quick example of layers. I only did five or six layers. A lot, most people do like 10 to 15 on an area or at least, you know, 10 at least. And that's it. So that's layering in a nutshell with a brief example using a cape. So as always, thank you so much for watching this episode of Miniature Painting 101. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned a bit about layering. And stay tuned for next week's episode, part 136, which is just around the corner. But if you don't want to wait for next week, check out the warp. Click on the link below for a free 14-day trial to my premium YouTube channel. We're not only going to see the next six months worth of Miniature Painting 101 episodes before anyone else. You get to see over dozens of other videos to hundreds of painting tutorials, battle reports, Airbrush 101 series, just tons of content. I know you'll love it, so stay tuned for more videos. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone.